And good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Recruit Military Live, a continuing series of live broadcasts covering all things military transition, veteran employment, mill spouse employment, and much, much more. My name is Lucas Conley, retired U.S. Army officer and former TAP program manager, here to share with you the ins and outs of navigating the turbulent waters of transition from military service to civilian employment. If you're in search of uh, a meaningful employment opportunity as you transition out of the service, please visit rmvets.com slash live to learn more. Okay, folks, let's roll. Are you a transitioning service member, a veteran job seeker, or a mill spouse seeking civilian employment? Well, you're in the right place, so don't touch that mouse. Today's topic is networking for career success with Recruit Military. Our guest today is going to show us how to use the resources and tools that Recruit Military provides uh, to conduct a job search, to find opportunities, to grow your network, and to connect with meaningful career opportunities. All right, let's see what we've got in store for you today. Our guest today is standing in the door and waiting for that green light. He's a former member of America's Honor Guard, the All-American 82nd Airborne Division, with service in both Iraq and Afghanistan. He's spent the last 13 years working for the nation's largest military-centric recruiting company, Recruit Military, helping military talent find meaningful employment opportunities with companies who value military talent. Do not put your hands together for our next guest. On the contrary, keep your feet and knees together as we check canopy and gain canopy control and welcome Mr. Chris Newsom. Chris, welcome to the show. Lucas, thanks so much for having me on, my friend. Um, yeah, I always appreciate a uh, an airborne introduction, so thank you for that. Well done. I always, uh, I always enjoyed uh, jumping out of aircraft. I just never enjoyed the landing. So, size. <laughs> It's right probably there, not meant to uh, to fly out of the side of a high performance aircraft. So, and my medical records indicate that. <laughs> all right, Maybe. folks. Now that you know who we are, we'd love to hear who you are. To all the viewers out there in internet land, hit that chat window. Let us know where you're watching from, who you're with, who you served with, what your status is. Are you in transition? Are you a veteran? Are you a male spouse, caregiver, or something else that we haven't thought of? We want to hear from you. Hit us up with your questions, comments, uh, concerns, gripes, uh, inter-service rivalry, uh, and time allowing, we'll address uh, those in turn. Okay, folks, as they say down on the flight line, we are wheels up. Now, Chris, for those folks out there who've never heard of Recruit Military or may have just recently heard of Recruit Military, um, tell us a little bit about the company and the business it does. Yeah, um, so Recruit Military, uh, the, the formal answer here is a full service military to civilian recruiting firm. So we are a recruiting entity specializing exclusively in the military niche. So whether you are a member of active duty, maybe going through the transition now or in the near future, you are a veteran, you've got your DD-214, um, you're a member of the Guard, member of the Reserve, male spouse, male family member, we're here for you. And we've got thousands and thousands of companies pretty much lined up around the block that specifically want to hire and retain military talent. So um, from 30,000 feet, that's that's what we are. That's what we do. A um, couple different verticals by which we go about getting you connected with that specific organization. Um, we run hiring events. Many of you have probably seen, uh, if, if you've heard Recruit Military, if it's been on the tip of the tongue or have been brought up in conversation, many cases it's because of these hiring events. We do them um, very high level, high impact, but low stress hiring events. And we do we do over 100 a year uh, and, and we do a That's good a blend. Yeah, volume is the name of the game. We want to make sure that um, that there's nobody that's that's going to be left out. So even if you're a CONUS, you're stationed in the Pacific, you're stationed in Europe, we've got solutions for you. Um, so it truly doesn't matter where you are, where you're going next, what your MOS was, uh, future work interest. We have representation. So these hiring events, we we do a blend. We do mostly in-person events, but we also blend in a lot of virtual events to ensure that we've got that kind of that global coverage, if you will. And with the in-person events, we do a mix between, um, you know, big city markets, think Dallas, Atlanta, 
um, markets like that, as well as military installations. So we try to bring them directly to you when and where we can. We can't be everywhere, hence why we have the blend of, of event categories. So between the events, our career portal that hosts hundreds of thousands of open opportunities. These are not imported uh, in, in, in a random way. These are all coming directly from organizations that we're working with that have dedicated military hiring initiatives. So they're serious. Um, so want to encourage you to, uh, to, to go to that watering hole because it's a very target rich environment. And then to cap it all off for, um, for select competencies, backgrounds, MOSs, we also have placement services. So we can put you in front of not just corporate America's recruiters, but our own internal recruiters that are actively, uh, placing candidates for open job requisitions. So those are the three primary verticals that we leverage. And from what I understand, we're not just talking about uh, truck drivers and generator operators. There's a there's a there's a wide uh, swath of opportunities from E1 to, to 07 or, or above. Um, can you just talk about and some of these are big companies, right? Yeah, 100 percent. So, you know, when you look at when you look at the military, it's run very much like a corporation. There are many jobs, you know, it, it's, there's, there's no stigma as far as, you know, what is a good role for a service member? Any role is a good role for a service member. It truly doesn't matter if you're talking about, you know, the entry level, which is typically not what you find in our ecosystem, all the way up to the executive level. These organizations want leaders. They want, um, you know, they, they really want to tap into the core competencies, some of the technical aptitudes, um, and primarily the, the virtues and values that are instilled from day one of basic training or boot camp. Um, so you're right. There, it's, it's a very wide array. It is not a one size fits all because service members transitioning are not a one size fits all. Uh, you can't really put them in a singular bucket other than the fact that they wore the uniform at some point. So we work with the majority of the fortune 500 fortune 200. So you'll see the big brands. You, you'll always see those big brands. They're there. They're very active. They're very present. But, um, again, I mentioned, you know, we, we have, I, I believe, it's it's roughly 16, 17,000 different organizations, different brands that we're working with wow. across every vertical, every industry that you can think of. So if you want to be a truck driver, by all means, we have transportation logistics oriented opportunities. But if you're going to make a pivot or if you're going to go down a different path, you know, there's um, sales, finance. I mean, name it. IT. Um, everybody coming out of the service brings with them a unique flavor as far as who they are as a candidate. And then with access to education benefits like, um, you know, chapter 31 or, you know, GI bill, most of us, and I, I use myself as an example, I was infantry, you know, I transitioned out and I took some infantry oriented roles on the civilian side, but I used that, that opportunity to get that training and that education to kind of retool my resume. So again, um, wide plethora of, of organizations and industry representation. So regardless of what you're looking for and how you're transitioning as far as rank and MOS go, there's something here for you. There's at least a handful of things here for you. So encourage you to come in and, and kind of sleuth around. Okay. So you've, you've piqued my interest and I think you've probably piqued the interest of a lot of the folks that are watching. Um, they may ask, how do I get started? I go uh, come to the website, I fill out some information, upload a resume. How does that work? Yeah, it's a streamlined process, fairly easy. Um, and one, I want to make sure that we we throw out there, everything is cost free. There's there's not a dime that would ever come out of a, a service member, a job seeker's pocket. So these oh, are, like these free. are free services. Absolutely, absolutely. And when it's free and it works, all the better. So um, it's it's a very um, very streamlined process. You go to recruitmilitary.com. There's kind of a fork in the road. I'm an employer. Mm -hmm. I'm a job seeker. We identify as job seekers, obviously. So you go down that pipeline and it's it's pretty much fill in the blanks. You're going to create your professional profile. Um, you know, there's there's a handful of questions that are asking about very military experience related data points, as well as, you know, on the civilian side, what do you want to do moving forward? What's your willingness to travel? Do you want to relocate? We want to really do a, you know, a quick yet deep dive into who you are as a job seeker, marrying your background with what do you want to do next? Because if you're like me, you don't necessarily follow your, your MOS career path for life. Um, for those that want to, by all means, there's plenty of options, but it's, it's, a, it's, it's a very wide array of options. So you go to recruitmilitary.com, you go to job seeker, and then fill in the blanks. You're going to create a profile. You're going to let us know who you are, name, 
rank, MOS, um, military schools that you went to? Do you have a security clearance? If so, which kind? Is it active? Um, down to what's your home of record? Where are you going next? What are your future work interests? Do you have an education at this point? Um, and that really fleshes you out in, in terms of letting corporate America know who you are. So the, the good news is for those listening, it takes maybe tops 10 to 15 minutes to really complete a professional profile. If you only have a couple minutes right now, if you're in front of your computer, but you've also got your little mini supercomputer in your phone or by your side, pull it out. You can do everything from the mobile experience. You can take 60 seconds to fill out a very baseline profile. And one of our representatives will actually pick up the phone and call you and work with you to ensure that that profile is complete and we can get you started in the right direction. So we're here to, you know, to, to, to work alongside you to get you to the point where you've announced your presence uh, to, to the workforce. So some, someone's going to call everybody, everybody, create a profile, every, to get a phone call. Every single job seeker. That's right. Yeah. Without right. exception. The, the only exception is if you don't answer and we've got to go to voicemail and we got to find a better way uh, or a better time to get a hold of you or communicate via email. But we will reach out to you directly with no exceptions and within 24 hours. Okay, fantastic. So I put my information in, I upload my resume. Now, who can see this information? So you control that. You are able as a job seeker to kind of toggle that. The recommendation, especially let's, you know, let's use active duty as an example. You're, you're just about to step out into the great unknown for the first time. You want everybody to see it. You don't want to be hard to find, you know, make it easy for these stakeholders, these recruiters, these hiring managers, make it easy for them to find you. Um, however, you know, we, we could also look at an individual that's currently working in a career. Maybe they separated a year or two ago. They're working in a career and they're looking to make a career pivot. They want to go to another organization or they want to switch industries, whatever the case might be. We get certifications and things evolve. We operate in a fluid environment. For that, you can maintain your profile, but you can kind of go in, in what I would call an incognito mode. You can't mm -hmm. necessarily be found, you know, maybe you don't want your current employer to find your professional profile and to know you're actively looking. That's fine. You can go incognito and you can, you can be, you know, the, the side of the party that's doing the searching, that's looking for the organizations, mm -hmm. applying to the roles. However, again, the previous example, you're active duty, you're going out there for the first time, you should be searching for those opportunities and organizations. And at the same time, those organizations can be searching for you. And ideally, there's a great meet in the middle. Awesome. Okay. And, uh, you know, I really kind of uh, keyed in on when you talked about um, about the job fairs, because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in many cases, when and we're really focusing um, this in the month of January, I'm talking about, about networking. And most people don't when I got out, I didn't know what networking meant. I mean, for my mind, it's it's what a bunch of uh, rich old guys at a golf club uh, <laughs> sipping single malt and talking about how they run the world. Um, how can I leverage these this job fairs that you talked about to kind of grow my network? Yeah, uh, great question. You know, networking uh, has layers to it. There's, you know, there's kind of, there's tentacles uh, in different categories, you know, regarding networking. Networking is everything. You know, they, you know, you hear like in Hollywood, it's all about who you know. And, you know, to a degree that transcends, you know, that transcends Hollywood. It goes across the board. Um, it's social capital. It's, it's people you know. And, and when you're coming to, let's say, a hiring event, these are all individuals you want to know and that you want them to know you. These are recruiters. These are hiring managers. These are brand representatives for these organizations. Um, they're not coming to wave a flag. They're coming with real jobs in hand. It's kind of a prerequisite for, uh, for the employers to participate. So you get an opportunity to go into a room that has anywhere from maybe 50 to even 100 plus organizations that are exhibiting, that are in attendance. High volume, you know, again, high volume. We want to make sure that uh, you've got a diverse array to kind of select from so you're not pigeonholed down a singular path. So every one of the events that we host has that diversity. And it's an opportunity for you to go basically table to table and introduce yourself. They don't know you and you don't know them. And, and to that end, I would encourage anybody that's listening that is attending or going to be attending an, an upcoming event, talk to everybody. We run these events for four hours. It's a four hour lightning storm, um, high impact, low intensity. You get, you know, very 
very warm and inviting. Most of the representatives that are there are prior service. Um, they understand the experience. They understand the language. So come and talk to them. You know, you see a brand where you might think you know what they're hiring for. You'll be pleasantly surprised. Talk to them. Give them your 30-second elevator pitch. Help them understand where you're coming from, where you're wanting to go, and ask them if that aligns with the opportunities that they have. And, and have a conversation. Have an organic conversation. You walk away with a new lead, with a new business card, with a new connection on LinkedIn. There you go. Um, there's, there's powerful networking that's at the tip of your fingers at these events. What are some things that a transitioning service member, a veteran job seeker, or a most spouse might do uh, in advance of, of a career fair to, to kind of optimize their, their time, optimize the face time that they're having with those employers. You mentioned yeah. 30 second elevator pitch. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Folks I, don't even know what that is. Yeah. And again, like we're here to help, you know, we're not just the conduit. We're not just providing a platform for you to connect. We want to make sure you're prepared as well. Preparation is everything. You know, when, when you're in service, you're getting op orders, you're, you're, you're doing, you know, preventative maintenance, you're, you're preparing for what's next. And, you know, there are some key things and all of these things can be found within Recruit Military's resource repertoire or the conversation that you'll have with one of our representatives. Understanding what a 30 second elevator pitch is. The concept is you're on an elevator. Let's say an executive walks in and you want to have a conversation and you want to introduce yourself and stand out. You've got roughly 30 seconds from floor to floor to make that impression mm -hmm. on the individual. And this is where you in a very concise and meaningful manner articulate who you are, what you've done, what your experience is, what you're looking to do moving forward. It only takes about 30 seconds. We have the framework. We even have templates for you. We have how-to videos on how to piece that together. Consume that information. You know, really be prepared before you go into that great unknown. You don't want to walk into a room full of eager and interested parties and, and not understand how to present yourself in the best light. So 30-second elevator pitches are always key. Um, having a tailored resume. You know, okay. at, at least having a resume in general. Now, the beauty of our hiring events is that everything is digital. You know, when when we went through COVID, we converted to a touch free sort of mentality and we've carried some of those elements over to where we are today. So when you go to a recruit military hiring event, your profile is going to be on your smartphone. You're going to have what we call a boarding pass. It's a QR code. And you're basically walking around with that QR code as you introduce yourself to these organizations and you're having them scan it. They scan it, they pull your profile in, they pull your resume in, they have you in their own little mini database. So again, a, another preparation item is try to complete your profile. If you can't complete it prior, we'll get you taken care of, we'll get you registered, we'll get you a QR code you know, at the door, at the registration point. So um, having that resume, really understanding what you wanna do moving forward. And I understand not everybody knows what they wanna do, hence <coughs> the networking element. You can see, the array of industries and work categories that are available to you. So um, if you can do some of that soul searching and understand what is it that you want to do in this next life, um, that'll certainly help you have more direct and meaningful conversations. But again, you can you can have a very open conversation as well with most of these recruiters. Um, so that preparation, make sure you're dressing to them you know, to impress the other party. Right. You don't necessarily have to be, you don't need to be in a tuxedo. You don't need to always <laughs> be suit and tie. You know, it depends, what job are you going for? Do you want to be a wealth manager in the financial sector? Suit and tie might be a good call. Otherwise, business casual. It certainly suffices. It's not inappropriate. Um, it, it's perfectly fine. If you're on base and you're still in uniform, no worries. These organizations understand that you're going through the transition now. So, as close as you can get to professional attire is uh, is certainly a golden standard. Um, we also have a myriad of preparation courses that we can put you through at any given time to make sure that you're ready for that interaction. Federal resume writing classes, advanced right. resume writing classes, and that just means you're tailoring your resume to the to the job or to the industry that you're going for. It'll help you get through a lot of the minutia on the front end. Um, so we'll help you with that resume writing. Heck, our system, even within the profile build itself, there's a resume generation tool. With the click of a button, the system will extract your data points from your profile and put it into a formatted resume that will pass just about any applicant tracking system. So um, there's an easy button if you need it. Um, and then there's more advanced workshops to help you work through that. They're live. 
they're available for you know question and answering. So don't be shy if you're in there. You're not just watching a pre-recorded session. We do these live, um, and they are current best practices as delivered by our uh, subject matter experts. Uh, beyond the resume writing, we also have employment workshops: how to dress to impress, dress for success, how to um, uh, best practices and in interviewing techniques, things along those lines. So again, simply by virtue of coming in that front door creating your professional profile. We will orient you towards all of those opportunities and organizations and events. But in, in mid stride, we're also introducing you to all of those resources to ensure that you're going to be successful when you have that interaction. Okay. So if I go to recruit military, I get access to 16, 17,000 employers I build my profile. Those 16 or 17,000 employers are going to see my profile. I'm going to see my resume. I get, access to hundreds of thousands of job opportunities. I have the opportunity to attend a career fair. I'm getting resume classes. I'm getting assistance with my resume. I got a resume generator tool. I've got a job board and, and this is all free. Everything's free. Everything's cost free. I'm We're here to support. We, uh, we've, we've all been through the transition. We've gone through that experience. Everybody within this organization has either prior service or is directly connected next of kin, spouse, uh, very intimately tied to the military community. We do not want to create barriers in between the job seeker and that that entity that specifically wants to hire and retain them. So, yep, we've removed all the all the blockades, all the barriers. It's a it's a streamlined process. And if I'm overseas, we have you, recruit military has these. Uh, these virtual career fairs, again, same, hundreds, same employers, but in a virtual platform. The only thing that's not necessarily applicable in real time to somebody stationed at CONUS is going to be an in-person hiring event. We're, mm -hmm. you know, we're mulling that over and trying to figure out how could we maybe deliver that at some point. It's a large uh, logistics, uh, you know, exercise, but um, you have access to everything. You're still visible to all of the recruiters, even our recruiters. The opportunities we have in our ecosystem are going to be local, national, and even global in some instances. So just because you're stationed in Okinawa or, uh, or Bavaria doesn't mean that you're not in the same exact running as any candidate that might be, uh, you know, stationed here domestically. So yeah, it, they're wide open door. All right. Well, if we ever have an event in Hawaii, or maybe <laughs> Munich, right around Oktoberfest, put me on the roster. I'll be happy to go and support. Keep you in mind. All right. Chris, I have one final question. This is the same question yeah. I've asked of all my guests. Um, if you had 30 seconds, just 30 seconds to give a transitioning service member, veteran, or mill spouse, job seeker, just one piece of advice uh, about recruit military and how they could use our resources to transition, build their network, and find career success, what would that be? I would emphasize proactive, proactive career planning and preparation. Again, you know, there's, there's no such thing as luck. It's simply the intersection where, you know, opportunity meets with preparation. So do the due diligence. When you're getting ready to have that conversation, do the research on that company, understand their mission statement, try to try to, you know, learn as much as you can about their culture, ask meaningful questions. But preparation covers a lot of different things. So define that as you wish. But everything that we just went over today from, you know, preparing your resume the right way, understanding that 30 second elevator pitch, um, all all play into this, you know. I understand some people may just have to show up if we're talking about a hiring event. That's okay. Come on in. We got you. We'll guide you. Um, but the best that you can uh, to prepare, it, it, it's ideal. Understand the roles that that organization is hiring for. So you don't walk up to their table and say, what do you do? You know, that's a really bad first impression. So do a little bit of that homework on the front end. Make sure that you're prepared, squared away the same way you would if you were going to a promotion board. You do those things, you're going to be successful. It's a guarantee. In uniform or out, prior planning still prevents poor performance. Chris, thanks for taking the time to be with us today on behalf of Recruit Military and the folks that joined us. It's been a pleasure to have you on the show. Always. I appreciate it, Lucas. Thanks. All right, folks, that about wraps it up for us today. If you haven't already done so, do yourself a solid and register on www.recruitmilitary.com for all the resources, access, job opportunities, all the things that Chris described here today and hundreds of thousands of job opportunities around the world and around the corner. And 
tune in January 24th when my colleagues Gabby and Raul will be hosting a very special live guest to talk more about how you can grow your network for career success. Don't miss it. This has been Lucas Conley for Recruit Military Live. Until next time, good luck and Godspeed.